All right, so I'd like to take a look at this guy here real quick. I'd like to find the moment of inertia of a rectangular sheet. All right. Uh, and it's going to rotate around a line that has a maximal density and that density is going to reduce. So I can't really draw that reduction in the um, in the density very well. I, I have ways of trying to do it, but they don't really look all that great. Um, and shading and stuff takes a long time and doing this isn't the most amazing thing. So if this is, say, the y direction, this is the x direction, and so forth and so on, rotating around that x direction, and right down here at zero, we have sort of the maximal density right there, right? That's the maximum density. Uh, and we'll call that maximum density sigma naught, all right? Um, and then when it goes all the way up to the maximum height here, h, the density is going to be zero. There's going to be, it's just going to taper off to zero. Uh, I don't know how that works. Uh, you could do this as an approximation for a very, uh, for a thin wedge, for example. Uh, it would work pretty well. Um, then on either side of the y-axis, we go minus w over two and over here, w over two for the width. So we've got all the things that we really need um, right, in, right in that description for what we want to find. And we want to find its moment of inertia, all right? So the first thing I always do is I just tally up what I know and what I want to find, right? So we want to, so if I've got a rectangular sheet, right, uh, that has a width of W, and a height of h, and has a variable density. Maybe I should have said with a variable density, but say la vie. Uh, and that variable density is going to be sigma of xy equal to sigma naught. And we use sigma for the density if it's a surface density, if it's two-dimensional density. Um, you'll see a lot of that in the um, electri electricity and magnetism class. So we'll do lambda for line density, sigma for surface density, and rho for volume density. Um, lambda and sigma make a lot of sense, right? Lambda is, for line density is, um, or linear density, that, uh, that's just the same, that lambda is L in Greek, right? And sigma is S in Greek. So those are making sense. It's that row that doesn't make sense, but hey, not everything has to make sense, right? Anyways, you already know about rho, right? You've been using rho for the density for a long time. Then you add this moment of inertia, right? And that's ix, so it's rotating around x, we'll call it ix. Um, and so that's going to be equal to in general, it's going to be equal to a double integral of r um, times sigma xy, or just sigma, let's just call it sigma. It's, it's a variable sigma, and then some distance, the distance from, from the axis to the point. So it's always going to be perpendicular to this rotational axis. And that's a square there, right? We square that distance for the second moment, right? It's a mo it is a moment of inertia, but you use moments for other things too. And that's a, a, an integral over this entire area. So we have little area elements. That's a little area element dA right there, okay? All right, so then we start filling these things in, right? Like the x stuff, that's minus w over two to w over two. The y, that's zero to h, right, zero to h. Um, then sigma is sigma naught one minus y over h. And this distance here is just the y coordinate, which is why I started at the zero in the first place, is to make life easy for me. Um, and then we have dy dx, right? Um, so we're not getting anything uh, really complicated. The x integral is comes out, so we can pull out this differential element and just integrate um, minus w over two to w over two dx, which is just w, right? This minus that. Uh, we can pull out the sigma naught because it's a constant. Then we have our integral zero to h, um, y squared minus y cubed over h. 
uh, dy. All right, and these aren't, you know, sort of the world's most complicated integrals. Uh, which is again one of the reasons why I chose this. You know, it's not really the most realistic example. What it is is it's simple, right? So hopefully you can understand what I'm doing. Um, so now I've got uh, sigma naught and w. I divide or I integrate uh, y squared, and that's one half or one q one third h cubed, right? And then we subtract zero from that, and so we don't have to worry about that. And then we subtract one quarter h to the fourth over h, which is still an h cubed. So, you know, nothing strange or uh, mind blowing has happened. Um, what else would we like to do? Well, now we can start pulling these things together, right? So, uh, this h cubed thing comes out, so we have sigma naught. Uh, w h cubed, and then we have one third minus one quarter. And you'll remember that one third minus one quarter is something fairly simple called uh, one twelfth. So we have sigma naught w h cubed over twelve, and that is the moment of inertia for that thing. So that's reasonably simple. That doesn't make any. That doesn't make your life really really hard. Um, so uh, I think that will. That will be enough for an ex for an example for these moment of inertia problems. I know in physics two you didn't really do a lot of these integrals for moment of inertia things, and the ones you did were really quite simple. Um, and so uh, you, you know, I just want to remind you about how this works because some of the moment of inertia things that they do in this book are a little bit complicated. So because it's a math class basically, so they just want to give you. Um, most complicated things they can without breaking your brain. And, you know, I think that's completely reasonable. I mean, that they shouldn't want to break your brain, right? So you should just be happy and um, thankful for that. Anyways, I will see you next time, and have a great time. Bye now.